But the things I'd like to point out here are that I'm mostly a SQL guy, but I did a stint in the NoSQL world uh, in CouchDB. And the one thing I saw there was that there were some standard data patterns that happened again and again, and every NoSQL company was going out and trying to come at it from a different way, trying to solve one use case. And eventually, they all end up with some flavor of SQL, because underlying SQL is math. And the underlying SQL uh, is uh, a relational algebra, which really literally looks at the math of data. Now you can take it apart and put it together. And so SQL is not going away, just like email is not going away. Uh, a lot, there's a lot of data in SQL databases. And uh, while you can analyze data that comes out of uh, the cloud, which is not in SQL databases, uh, there's a whole uh, opportunity to apply machine learning to data in the enterprise that's in SQL databases. And often what that means is that you run some queries, you put it out to a CSV file or some other uh, modern file system format, and then you pull it into Spark or you pull it into something else or you pull it into Pandas, and then you run it. And often if you're on a single machine, then you're limited by the amount of memory you have. And, uh, but then you're going back and forth between data types and mapping things, and some things are getting dropped because of nulls. There's all kinds of stuff. So there's some advantage. Uh, I would say there's some advantage to using machine learning in the database if you could do that. So why? Uh, for some reasons that I uh, already talked about. But there are a lot of people who know SQL, who all they do is SQL. And if you ask them to learn Python and other languages, yeah, we can take some classes, but they're not as proficient at it as they are at SQL. They can write deep SQL queries, can do amazing things, especially with the BI extensions to databases, uh, where you can do window functions and you can do all kinds of stuff. Uh, but if they have to do the same kind of thing in another language, it's a, it's a, a big ask for someone who's already deeply into a certain language. So if you could take machine learning and put it in there, uh, there's an advantage where you could quickly uh, at least have them learn how to play with the data that they have, uh, iterate on it, uh, without this huge uh, conceptual barrier. Uh, so, so, so what is it? Uh, so it's, it's called Madlib, and this is, this is a, actually an Apache project that's been uh, around, uh, not necessarily as Apache, but as a project for about 10 years. Uh, it started as a research project, so uh, let me go here. And so we, we, before we get into the insides of it, uh, it basically works as a Postgres extension. And if uh, any of you have used Postgres, you know how extensible it is. And it's, it, it has an a, a extensibility deeply built in. The original Postgres project came as a project after the Ingress project at Berkeley. And the Ingress project was a pure relational database project. And at that time, people were talking about object relational databases. How do you ex extend the relational database model to add other things so that you can model your uh, uh, business better? Uh, of course, text analysis was one of those things, but there were many other things. So the same person uh, uh, who, who did the original Ingress project did uh, the Postgres project. And the post was supposed to be Postgres because it's after Ingress. And uh, it, it has a lot of extensions, uh, so you can, you know, most databases, you can add functions and procedures, but here you can actually add types. Uh, you can go in there and add extension languages. Uh, so Postgres, you can write stored procedures in Python. Uh, you can write stored procedures in uh, uh, Perl if you want. You can write stored procedures in uh, uh, JavaScript, which is interesting and brings the, uh, the ability to go straight from the database to the web browser. Uh, so the extensibility is, is powerful. and uh, so the Madlib project has exploited the uh, extensibility of the database, and also there, the Berkeley group uh, knows Postgres in and out. And so there was a collaboration, uh, so uh, a, a collaboration with UC Berkeley and uh, University of Wisconsin and Florida, and at that time there was this company called Greenplum. How many people know Greenplum? Oh, cool. So Greenplum is a massively parallel Postgres, if you wish. And essentially, the, 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 the genius of Greenplum was that from the client side, it looked exactly like Postgres. And you could use existing Postgres clients. There was only one extra addition, which was if you use the distributed by clause, which said which is the ID and what that ID is going to be distributed across your segments. And so when you did massively parallel stuff, you added the distributed by and the ID. 
So their interest uh, was to take machine learning and scale it out uh, by applying it to Greenplum, but in the process, they had to make it work inside Postgres. Uh, the a missed opportunity is that all these years, uh, nobody's really exploited uh, the, the uh, machine learning in Postgres, and I discovered it because my startup, Numeric, uh, had a bunch of machine learning in the cloud, but nobody wanted to put their software engineering artifacts in the cloud. So we had to come up with something on-prem. And then I started searching for things, and then I rediscovered this, because I remembered this. I was consulting to Pivotal at that time, and this was going on, and I was interested, but I didn't know it was continuing. And so I'm very excited about it, and I would like more and more people to start using it. And uh, part of it is uh, just created a Google group for discussion if anybody wants to know how to, to install it, how to get it using, and all the initial stuff. Now, it has all these uh, statistics libraries, and, and you know, in the next version, uh, supposed to be out in, in Q4 of last year, but, you know, it's software, so it's not out yet. <laughs> uh, and uh, so TensorFlow uh, integration, and uh, I'm not sure what that means yet, but it probably means that you could invoke a lot of TensorFlow functionality and take data, data from here and stream it out to TensorFlow and all that. So just the, the mandatory multi-layer cake slide. Uh, so essentially what is happening here is that what the user sees and what we'll do a demo of is SQL. And in the SQL, you, do, you say something which is a very strange metaphor is to say select linear regression. And then you provide a bunch of parameters that are what's the input table, what's the output table, and all the, uh, which, which are the dependent variables, uh, uh, which are the dependent variable, which are the independent, all of that stuff is provided as SQL. Underneath all that is Python, which really does, it does all the non-performance stuff, like running loops and stuff. And internally, there's a C++ layer that then uh, works with the database. So that stuff works on Python, and then it also works on Greenplum. So initially, when they implemented it, and this is taken from the paper, that's all they were doing, some linear regression and logistic regression, et cetera. And now, and that was version 0.3, if I remember correctly. And now the version is 1.16. And this is all the stuff they have. It's like every single one of these things. And, and the, the interesting thing is that they have, a, it's open source, it's uh, uh, on GitHub, and uh, it has a bunch of uh, uh, Jupyter notebooks uh, to, to show you how to start using it. And I'm gonna use one of those with some modifications. And, but they're very, very rudimentary. All they show you is the syntax, and what I've taken apart myself is to build learning materials on top of that to make it much easier for people to use it. And if you have some experience doing that, you'd like to participate, please uh, get in touch with me afterwards because uh, I think this is a huge opportunity for people to, uh, to build some kind of a powerful analytics workstation um, that you can do rapid iteration. So your typical uh, machine learning workflow is you clean data, you clean data, you clean data, you clean data, and then you clean data and then you <laughs> complain about cleaning data. Uh, and then you extract it into some machine learning uh, friendly structures, and then you do the usual uh, two step, and then you generate models, and then you loop until everything looks good. So what do you do in Madlib? So you're, you're saved this stuff because the data is already in the database, and uh, the ML friendly data structure in this case is the table. The data is already in the table. And if you did it in pandas, the analogy is that it's in a data frame. So the, the data frame is an analogy of a table, but for people who know pandas and don't know SQL, the table is an analogy of the, the data frame. Uh, so uh, the data is there, and uh, we're gonna run some machine learning on it. So how do you use it, right? So like I said, so the, the, the interesting thing is that you start with the data table, and you give it, when you invoke the SQL, you give it some parameters. And what you get as the output is a model. So what is the model? This model is a bunch of parameters. So if it's linear regression, it'll be uh, the linear regression parameters, the, the coefficients for each variable, and then you'll get some, uh, some other stuff. So all of that is in a database, and the output is also in a table. So I'm gonna rush through, oops. I'm gonna rush through some of this. Where am I now? Here. I'm gonna rush, ah. 
what is going on. Okay. So the, all that remains is uh, it's working. It requires a lot of stuff to be done. Uh, you can actually do text processing and graph processing inside the database. So what I'm going to do next is uh, quickly, uh, so I'm going to also run some tutorials on uh, Project Night, so uh, everybody's invited. And I'm going to go to the demo, right? So. So what we have here is, and let me get rid of this. So how many people are familiar with the SQL magic in Python notebooks? Not too many, OK. So there's, there are extensions in, in Python notebooks called magics, which allow you to have some uh, syntactic sugar uh, that allows you to do stuff easily. And, and they usually start off with a percent sign. So there's a SQL magic. And what this is saying is, please load the SQL magic so that I can just type SQL queries instead of having to take Python and wrap it, uh, take SQL and wrap it in Python and do parameter passing and all of that stuff. So uh, again, uh, if, it's, if you're new to all of that, uh, please come to the uh, tutorial. Uh, and you, you give this a, a, a URL. Uh, that's all my stuff in there. And uh, what I have in there is a training data set. And if you want to take a look at what that is, so percent SQL, and then just simply, and that's what in there. And if you've, if you've done some other uh, uh, machine learning stuff, there's this data set on, on wine. And uh, we try to predict the quality of wine based on some parameters. And so what we're doing is there are two data sets. I mean, I'm sorry, two, two tables, a training set and a test set. Uh, and they're just database tables. And uh, when you do the syntax, what you get back is a result set. And you've got to invoke another little uh, uh, line here to convert it into a data frame. And so what we've done is uh, we've, we've done both of those. And what is done is you know, it's loaded up all that. And so this is where the, the meat of the thing comes in. So you're going to drop those things just because it, from the past time. And then you're going to run a regression. And this is, this is the syntax. So it's matlib dot some algorithm, input table which should exist, output table, which shouldn't exist. It's going to create it. Uh, and what is it that you're trying to predict? And uh, what are your uh, uh, columns that you're using as uh, your uh, independent variables? And so you do that. I don't know what that is. You do that, and it's generated a model. Okay, And the model parameters are now in, so this is, this summary is just uh, something that tells you that you started with linear regression, source table, output table, blah, 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 blah. But this is where you generate the model. And these are model parameters, the coefficients. And it generates all of these things, p-values. Let's look at the p-values. This looks good. This looks good. This is, um, this is good, and this is not that great. So let's see whether we can predict something. And the reason I had to put this long thing in one line is because if you want to take the results set and work on it, it's got to be single line. But essentially, what I'm doing here is it's got a model. Now we're going to take the test set, and we're going to predict on it. And so it's going to run this. And then we're going to run this. And just to make sure that we have a, we have a data frame, we want to look at the columns. And yeah, those are the columns. And now I'm going to. Now that I've gone to SQL, I've done all the magic, and it's now back in Python in the, in the scope of my notebook. And then I can use my usual stuff. So now I'm looking at how good the predictions are. And they're not great, but they're not too bad either, considering we haven't really, this is just the first run. This could be your baseline. And now you could go in, and now this is, this is where the fun is, that if now I want to iterate and say, how do I get better, uh, all I have to do is to go back here and just keep playing with the columns that I gave as input. Right? Just literally edit this text, try again. Edit this text, try again. So it's reduced the amount of steps I have to do to go and iterate and, and, and converge in a solution. And if this is a, a sample data set, uh, or this is a data set, why are you complaining? Anyway, that, that's, that's as much as the demo was. And uh, the, the basic idea being that 
if, since everything is in one place, uh, you can iterate fast. And you don't have to move data around. And uh, with the SQL syntax, you're both running uh, regression and uh, data in, in and out uh, at the same time. 